Hello everybody, uh, this is Undead Viking, coming to you with another one of my video reviews. Uh, this is uh, review number 100. Um, technically I've done more than 100 reviews. Uh, if you're uh, on the Board Game Geek website, uh, you'll see all of them on there underneath uh, my user ID. Uh, but um, uh, this is technically uh, what I'm calling review number 100. Um, for a long time, uh, I have hinted, uh, blatantly said, uh, alluded to uh, the fact that uh, the game that I am going to review for number 100 is my favorite game. And, uh, and anybody who knows me or who has followed these things at all, I uh, know that my favorite game is Arkham Horror. Now, why would I do a review of a game that you know I'm going to say is awesome? Well, you know, I, I asked myself that question, actually. And, um... The bottom line is that this review is is more going to be uh, for me, actually. Um, and it's going to be for uh, the people that, um, in the past, have watched a ton of these reviews and that I've done. And they want to uh, get to know me a little bit better. And also just get to know um, a little bit more about my background. And also just maybe, and, and along the way, uh, learn uh, exactly what what Arkham Horror is and, and, and whether or not it would fit with your group. <coughs> if you are um, tuning in to this because you think I'm going to do a step-by-step uh, -step analysis of the gameplay of Arkham Horror, I do apologize. Um, you're not going to see that. You're going to see um, an interesting overview, and I'm going to leave it at that. It's kind of a little foreshadowing. Um, and, uh, and I do apologize for that. If you're tuning in for that, uh, be, because, you know, Arkham Horror is a very complex game. Um, I'm just going to say right now, if you're looking for that, I would strongly suggest there are some videos out there that do assist with that, that have been done already, and I would strongly, strongly, strongly suggest that you uh, take it upon yourself to download in the file section at BoardGameGeek.com um, the turn summary and uh, player aid. Uh, made by Universal Head, uh, which he, he, uh, might be the, the best um, uh, file-slash-game explainer in a printed format uh, that Board Game Geek ever has seen or heard of. Uh, and so, Universal Head, if you're watching this, um, just uh, thank you for all the games that you've helped me learn. But, um, I guess I, there's no real good way to start this off, so I'm going to start off by saying that I have a cold. Uh, that you can probably tell uh, from my voice. So um, I do apologize. I'll probably be drinking some water just so I'm not uh, coughing up a storm while I do this. Uh, but um, there's really no good way uh, to do this, in my opinion, other than just kind of tell you a little bit about myself. Um, uh, I was born in uh, 1971. I was born in Fargo, North Dakota. And, uh, and, I, and I lived there for like the first 36 years of my life. And then I made the big move, um, literally across a river into Moorhead, Minnesota, which is like right next to Fargo, North Dakota. Um, Fargo is right on the border, and so is Moorhead on the border, obviously. Um, uh, when I was growing up, um, Fargo is the biggest town in North Dakota, which isn't saying a whole heck, a whole heck of a lot. Um, it's, it's one of those things where um, there wasn't a lot to do when I was younger, um, you know, and I, I mean, I, I'm sure there were, in 1976, 77, when I was in grade school, um, there probably wasn't a lot to do, uh, as far as kids go, as compared to now, anywhere, you know, comparatively. <coughs> but I do remember, um, I spent most of my youth, um, uh, as long as it was, there wasn't a blizzard and it wasn't, uh, incredibly horrible outside, uh, I spent most of my youth out, outside, uh, riding a bike, um, uh, cruising down to the one mall that, that Fargo had to uh, go to the Pirate's Den, which was the arcade, to play some pinball or, or whatever, um, you know, uh, coin-operated arcade game that happened to tickle my fancy at that time. Um, and I remember uh, as, as I was growing up... Um, I was really excited uh, the year uh, my parents gave my older brother an Atari 2600 uh, for Christmas. And, um, you know, and I remember, and I still remember all those great days of sitting in the basement and, and, and playing 
uh, those games with with the with, with my joystick and, and and sitting there and playing Pitfall and, and River Raid and and um, just fantastic. And I and I and I and I fast forwarded myself now uh, sitting in front of my uh, 50 inch plasma screen playing Skyrim, and I just kind of um, think to myself just like. Oh my gosh, what would like the six-year-old me uh, do with something like this? But anyway, um, the thing was is that I was sitting in my basement, uh, my parents' basement, playing uh, Empire Strikes Back on the uh, the Atari, which was a very very good game. Um, if you remember that one, you actually shot um, the Adats with your snow speeder, and it was really quite fun. And um, my brother uh, came home. My brother was. Uh, my brother's six years older than I am, and uh, I was like, I'm guessing nine at this time, and he had been out with his friends. Um, he had a car, so he was able to get around now, and uh, you know, and then I noticed when I got to be 15, I got a car, and I was able to get out of the house a lot more too then. But um, uh, he came home and he told me about this great game that he had just played, and um, he explained that like he was a guy that was a fighter, and he had a sword, and. Uh, they were fighting goblins and orcs. That's the first time I ever heard that word. And then, then, then one of those friends was a wizard, and another one of his friends was a thief. And um, they got into a cave, and they found some treasure. And then at the bottom of the cave, they found a dragon. And they couldn't defeat the dragon, so they ended up running away. But they're going to go back the next day and try to fight it. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, um, "Geez, you know what? What?" What cartridge is this? Is this like an Intellivision game? Is this like a ColecoVision game? You know, because that was the big system back then. And uh, my brother kind of looked at me like I was an idiot. And he said, no, I was playing Dungeons and Dragons. And I was like, whoa, 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 what is this game? And he's like, oh, you, you, you roll dice and it's all paper and pencil. And <laughs> I remember, um, I, I, I mean, it was like, I got to play this game. This sounds amazing. I, I can't think of a game, I can't think of any game that would be better than this. And um, he, of course, since he was older than me, he was like, yeah, I'm not going to bring my uh, Nimrod nine-year-old brother uh, with me to play Dungeons and Dragons. So, when you're nine years old and you have no sense of income and you want something, what do you do? Uh, you go and you beg your mom, which is exactly what I did. And uh, my mother, uh, bless her heart, and uh, if it wasn't for my mother uh, uh, fostering all my little geeky, nerdy um, interests that I had as I was growing up, I probably wouldn't be doing this, right? So my mom's awesome, you know, and she still is. And uh, But she went and she, like, she found the games, like, in a catalog at JCPenney's, and she ordered them for me. This is back when you couldn't order things because the internet wasn't existing. So what you did was you went into a catalog and you made a phone call and you gave them your credit card information. And then in like four to six weeks, they would uh, deliver the item uh, to your house. But anyway, my mom actually uh, purchased uh, the advanced uh, Dungeons & Dragons Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, and uh, Monster Manual for me. And of course... I knew nothing about the game, mind you. I mean, nothing. Other than, like, this this brief blurb that my brother had told me. And then every time we went to go play, I'd ask him more about the game. And, but anyway, they they uh, get these books. And I, you remember, I'm nine years old. And if you've read those books, you realize it's just like, my mind was blown. I, I had trouble understanding it. I had trouble grasping it. But I tried. And um, <clears throat> there was a couple other kids in my grade school. They were interested in it, and we tried. We played it. And I do remember that we didn't have dice at first. I forgot to ask my mom to order some of those. So she had to reorder some dice. And until then, um, we had six-sided dice. So we so we decided that uh, six-sided, you know, we have those. And then for the 12-sided, we'd roll two of those. That made sense, right? But for everything else, uh, what we did was we actually um, put pieces of paper in uh, baggies. Um, uh, and I don't even think we had, this is back before they even had Ziploc bags, you know, that just didn't exist. You had these fold-over ones for, for sandwiches, and you'd, um, and we'd put the, 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 these numbers, we'd write them on a piece of paper, and put them, you'd put your hand in there and pull it out. And that's how we rolled, like a d20, it was like, oh, come on, and you learn what the 20 felt like, and so you pull it out, but anyway. So, I played D&D &D a lot, and we, uh, I, I wish I could find some of those old, dungeons and some of those old characters because I mean it was I'm sure they were really fantastic and 
and and and utterly ridiculous. But um, it did my 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 role playing life didn't really uh, explode until I got to junior high, when um, I ended up going to junior high, and then <coughs> there were like all this because the junior high was much bigger in my grade school. There's all these influx of other students, and then eventually, because you're just kind of cruising around, you eventually um, meet and, and run into uh, other people that uh, also play Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, and or because you're bringing those books with you to school, you know, you're reading them during lunch hour and stuff like that. And I, I formed this gaming group that that was really really tight knit actually, and it was really cool. Um, the really cool thing is there's actually several people in that group that I still game with today, like 30 years later, which, you know, when you think about it, is, is just ridiculous. You know, you just kind of like, whoa, you know, how's it even possible? How did, how did I maintain something like that for three decades? But um, the thing was, it was like, uh, we, we, when I was in high school, we played Dungeons & Dragons probably every weekend, and we were really, really heavily into it. And uh, one of my friends, David, uh, actually... Um, on one on a lark, uh, decided to buy it, this game called Talisman. It was on the shelf at the game store that we had in town, and um, and we played it. and And I remember being just totally blown away about how much fun that game was. I mean, and and I I I'm guessing that in junior high and in 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 high school, we probably played somewhere between three hundred to four hundred games of Talisman. I mean, it was just it was something we played every weekend. Um, if, if David couldn't make it, we'd, we'd, we'd send somebody to his house to get the game. Um, you know, it was one of those things that, like, we were really massively into. And, and that was, like, a board game that was, like, totally unlike any other board game I played. I mean, I played, when I was younger, I played Scrabble, I played, uh, you know, Payday, uh, Bonkers, um, Monopoly, of course. You know, Careers. Games like that, you know. And... But this game was something totally different. I mean, it was just totally something uh, so uh, much greater. And you, you could kind of tell. <coughs> and um, as I, you know, and then one of the things kind of that, that was that was awesome about it was that, you know, if, if you didn't have enough people to play D&D, &D, you could play Talisman. And, and, and that was like, it was kind of like the go-to game if we couldn't do something else. And um, there were some other games we played back then. I remember I, I, I picked up um, uh, Junta, uh, or Junta, uh, the, like that old, old school game. Um, uh, gosh, I can't remember all of them now. I mean, uh, you know, it's just a lot of those, um, a lot of those like uh, games that TSR put out that were in the Ziploc baggies. I can't think of them right now. Uh, I remember we, I, I have somewhere in my parents' house, I have the old... Uh, plastic box uh, of GEV and Ogre. I have no idea where they are, you know. And we played those too, but I mean, the go-to game was Talisman. So, fast forward, go to college, lose track of everybody because everybody pff, scatters and goes to different colleges. Um, don't really find a game group in college. I mean, one or two, and you played a couple times, but it just didn't click. And then, um, you know, fast forward until, you know, my late 20s. And, um, uh, in an off-handed decision, uh, our game group, we're all, for whatever reason, the people that are still in town, we kind of talk right over, like, wouldn't it be cool if we got together and played D&D again? And so we did. And so we got together and we started playing D&D again, and, and, and it was fun. It was really fun. And then all of a sudden, you know, of course, we started talking about, <coughs> wouldn't it be cool if we could play um, Talisman again? And as luck would have it, when David left town to uh, go to college, he actually left his copy of, of, of Talonson behind. And um, we played it a lot. But, you know, it's it started to show its age a little bit. We, we kind of realized that it was um, a little bit dull and dry. And uh, and it was like one of those things where we didn't play it uh, as often as we used to. The, the, the shine had come off the apple a little bit. So... Um, along the way, somewhere in there, in my mid-30s, I, uh, met my wife, not wife, obviously, and, uh, and in the course of our dating, um, she, uh, became with child, and, uh, my life kind of changed completely, because now I wasn't just, 
that guy who worked and had the young girlfriend and had the, you know, just flying by the seat of my pants. I mean, I was very, very soon going to be in charge of, of raising a small child. And so I had to kind of just put a hold on a lot of things. And, uh, uh, and one of them was my gaming. I just, I, I didn't have time to like get together and play D&D &D with everybody anymore. And, but I really missed it. So around this time, I had heard that a new uh, version of Talisman was coming out. And um, I researched it, and it was like by Black Box Industries, a company that doesn't exist anymore. And um, and a friend of mine, actually, Jason, went to Gen Con, and he actually purchased that copy. And so we played that, and it was kind of like the old thing again. We were all excited to play it. And, you know, I don't, it didn't really change much, but it was kind of neat, and we were excited to play it and everything like that. And then, um, and then I heard that uh, when that company went under, um, that this company, Fantasy Flight Games, a company that I bought, purchased a lot of their role-playing game stuff, um, when that they, they had got got the uh, rights to it. So I remember researching into that, and and then I saw that they other had other uh, uh, board games, and that's the very first time I ever saw this game. And I was looking in their catalog, and I was like, that's really, really cool. I, I, that picture just made me go, that's that's awesome. And even the back, you know, this big scary monster up here, you know. And um, I was like, wow, that game looks cool. And I read more about it, and I was like, it's a co-op game. You know, it's like you don't even play against each other. You, you're... You're, you're working together against the game. And I was just like, well, that's really cool. You know, and I was like, <clears throat> and I sat there and I kind of just decided I had to have it, you know, and um, I went, I didn't, we don't really have a gaming store in town, or at least we didn't at that time. Now we kind of have one, but um, I went and I, uh, and I went online. And of course, if you go online, you don't know of where to shop. So I, I went, I went to eBay and I went looking for them and I actually found um, an eBay store that was actually located uh, really close to my house uh, or my apartment at that time. I was living in my house yet. And, um, and it was cool. I contacted this place, J&J Board Games. Uh, they, uh, they, yeah, sure. You know, I bought the game. I didn't have to pay for shipping. You know, I just drove over to this, this, this lovely couple's home. Um, they had this, this exact copy of the game waiting for me. And I brought it home. And I immediately tore it open. And uh, I started reading the rules, and I was just like, ah, ah, what? You know, I mean, I was really like, taken with the game, because, I mean, I had played a lot of Call of Cthulhu, the role-playing game, before. And I was really excited uh, about to play the game. But, I mean, I'll be fully honest, I was just, what? What the? I, uh, you know? And so, uh, you might see where this is going. Um, when researching the game and trying to get some answers, some questions about the rules, uh, I ended up at BoardGameGeek.com. And and this is kind of bugs me, because I, I, I logged in, I lurked on there in 2007, and uh, toward the end of 2007. And I'll be completely honest, I um, I didn't sign up until 2008. Now, so it kind of bugs me that I could have maybe possibly had a 2007 uh, contributor badge, you know, but let's be honest, I probably wouldn't have bought it anyway. So, um, what happened was, it was like, I got on the website, I started, and like, boom, like, this this world of of other board games just kind of showed itself to me. Now, at first, I didn't really know what I was doing. And in all honesty, I mean, I just I just was, like, just overwhelmed by it. Though I do remember uh, that uh, there was lots of different suggestions for different games. And, hey, if you like this game, you'll should like this game. If you like this game, you'll like this game. And so I remember after uh, my friends and I played Arkham War, and got beaten by it repeatedly over and over again. Um, I was looking and all of a sudden I, I heard about a game called Runebound. And so I was like, oh, it kind of looks like Talisman. It's a multiplayer. I ended up picking that up as well. You know, and it was just, and it kind of just slowly but surely blossomed. Now, here's where the actual uh, cool review part of this is going to start. Now, a little more backstory, and I apologize, and I, I thank you for bearing with me and listening to this, and, and, and maybe some of you have turned it off by now, but for those of you who haven't, this, this is where it gets cool. Um, 
this is kind of a two-part review. Um, and the reason for that is this. Um, there was a website called Posey.com that was, uh, back in 2008, they were trying to do a uh, daily deal board game website where um, you could, every day, they would have a different board game that they'd sell fairly cheap, and then you could buy one. And uh, I got involved on that website uh, and on that, that message board very, very heavily, much more heavily than I was in Board Game Geek. And I met and have made friends with several, several people on that posy.com website. And I'm not going to list off your names. You know who you are. Um, you know, I mean, there's definitely people that uh, I definitely connected with a lot more than others. I mean, Brian, if you're watching this, you know, and it's just, and it's cool that, that like, I, I was able to get those friends. But one of the cool things about it was is that they had contests and they had offers and all these things. And one of the contests that they actually had was they asked people to do video reviews. So, um, I decided that I would do a video review of Arkham Horror. And this is, now mind you, this is back in 2008. Now, this is a two-part review because I'm going to have you watch that review from 2008. Um, <coughs> I'm guessing... There is a very scant handful of you out there that uh, have actually seen this before. Now, the problem is, is that I wanted to actually um, splice that directly into this video. But the camera that I used for that particular video um, is so old and so out of date. I mean, I tried with all of my video editing powers, which aren't great, mind you. And you, if you've watched these, you probably know that. Uh, to put these things together and I just I just couldn't I mean, it, it just I mean the resolution's all wrong it's just it's just it's not a not a really really good camera it was that I used for it so what I'm gonna have you do is um, this this review uh, is going to like stop right now and um, there's going to be a second review and, and like and I do apologize if you're if you if you're watching this as a subscriber uh, to my YouTube channel, you're probably going to see this video pop up first, and the other review is probably uploading right now as you're watching this. So the problem there is is that you know you have nothing to watch at this point. So um, I apologize for the for the people that are like that. But what's going to happen is is that I'm going to just cut away, and uh, and and you're going to go and find the other review and this is like going to be Arkham Horror watch this first and then, then there's going to be Arkham Horror you know press play on this when told to press play on that one and what's going to happen is, is you're going to watch that video review and now mind you um, this is from quite a long time ago so um, uh, I'd like to think that I've gotten better at doing this and so but it, it'll be kind of fun it's kind of like a little time capsule we all get to go back in the time and, and watch a very young uh, undead Viking uh, uh, do his thing for Arkham Horror. Now, you don't have to pause this video at all or anything like that. This is just going to continue along, um, and uh, maybe possibly I'll be sitting here doing some dance moves or something. But um, the video is like about 16 minutes long. So, um, and I apologize for having to jump through hoops, hoops and everything like that. But um, uh, this is kind of a special thing for me, and, and I thought it was worth it. And if it isn't, you know what? You don't have to watch this and. And, um, and you can send me nasty emails and say I'm really annoying and boring for doing this. And, and uh, I will smile and say, yeah, you're probably right. But anyway, um, i got my little timer here set up on my phone. I am hitting start. And we're going to go. So uh, go ahead and uh, hit uh, pause. No, you don't have to pause this one. Hit play on the other one. And I'm done here. I'm not joking, watch the other one. Oh, and turn on the volume on this one.
it's going right now. You see him? No, I have. Come here, I'll explain it to you. Can you see him? Yes. Remember that review you did for me a thousand years ago? This game? Sure. So, this is my hundredth review. So I did an introduction. And now, they're going to watch this one. And silent while the other one plays. So right now they'll keep me doing this, but they'll have the other, I'm going to upload both of them. And I actually said, hey, okay, just let this one go, and 60 minutes from now, I'll begin talking again. So now they get to look at Caleb. Do, 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 do. He doesn't like that. <laughs> Who's my Caleb? Caleb face. Hey buddy. Oh, Caleb. Hey. Teen tiny man. Oh, he's grouchy. He's sick, by the way. You're sick. He's got a raspy little cry. Oh. And his eyes all red. Oh. What's my daughter doing right now? Your daughter is watching Blue's Clues. Blue's Clues. I'm so excited. Find another paw print, and that's the first clue. Nope. Get off cat. Ah. Ah. Yeah, I gotta zoom in though. Rylan, leave the cat alone. Roo, look at me. Can you wave to the camera? Wave. I love you, Dad. <laughs> Can you hold a beak? Ah. Oh, not like that. Alright, alright, alright. She's a little too heavy for me. Here you go. Comically large dog treat. Secret so Lily is clinging onto the chair. Just in case you didn't see the red. Ow, 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 ow. Can I try trade the take a video of you? And Caleb. Have a seat, buddy. Can you have a can you have a video Here. of you, Sam? Don't touch it. That's good. You have to say something, Sam. I can't see you. Oh. Hi, Rylan. 
Hi. Both of us. Oh. All right, jeez. Can you do more videos? So Maybe later. Come on. Out, out. We'll do it later. Trust uh, me. Now. We'll do it later. We'll you around. Get out of here. Go. Get. What? Take
<clears throat> All right, so rather embarrassing, and a lot more hair. Um, no, you can't really tell because I was wearing a bandana. I was also slimmer. Yeah. I don't know. Um, uh, for those of you wondering, uh, Chubb's Pub is the uh, sponsor of my softball team and also the sponsor of my drinking from ages 21 to about 35. So, um, and a great bar. If you ever come to town uh, and give me a call and uh, you want to meet out for a drink and some gaming, um, they are very cool about letting me play uh, card games and stuff at one of their many booths and uh, and it's also a good place just to hang out and, and, and have a nice uh, frosty beer but anyway um so yeah it's it, that was that was Arkham Horror and uh, the video may not have looked like much but it was good enough uh, for me to win second prize in their contest and I got a free uh, iFlip video camera thing um, <clears throat> it's an old school one, uh, one that was before the whole HD thing, but still, you know, I still have it. I haven't used it in forever, but that was really cool. And I did a lot of, it made a lot of videos of my daughter uh, playing when she was younger with that, and so that was really cool. Um, let me talk about Arkham Horror for a little bit. Um, Arkham Horror is a great game, and uh, it's a great game because it fits me perfectly. Uh... Arkham Horror is not going to be good for people that uh, don't like randomness, uh, that uh, don't like um, kind of a, a, a hopeless feeling, because uh, there's a lot of like, no matter what you do, you're going to lose anyway going on. And it might not be for a lot of people that uh, like co-ops, but want a deterministic co-op. Um, I'm not a big fan of co-ops. I mean, I thought after playing Arkham Horror, I really would be. I thought that I would really, really enjoy other cooperative games. And I've played many, many, many cooperative games uh, since then. Um, I didn't like Shadows Over Camelot. Uh, I hated Pandemic. Um, you know, I... You know, it's just... And even, like, games that... Uh, I mean, that, that had glimmers of, 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 of coolness to them. Uh, eventually, their, uh, their, their, their shine uh, left for me. Uh, games like Yggdrasil, uh, I mean, which is a really good game. I, 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 I like the design, I like the theme, but um, you know, I just don't play it much anymore. Uh, but I'm not here to do a review of Yggdrasil. Um, this game, Arkham Horror, uh, is a game where when you sit down to play it's as far as my group is concerned it's going to be about the story that we're going to be told and that's it uh, I can honestly say that yes we want to win but we don't really care if we do or not and I think that's to begin with to get the most out of Arkham Horror that's the mentality you have to go in with I also think that while there's been tons of people that post strategy after strategy after strategy about how to beat Arkham Horror, <coughs> where they say, make sure you go to this spot and, and close that down first because that's where the worst gates are, or make sure you go here and, and have one person sitting here and they can make a ton of money, and then other people can come and get that money, and then they can go and take that money and they can buy weapons and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, I suppose you could, but that's just that's just not the way I I I, I play this game. I, and a matter of fact, I think that if you take Arkham Horror and you boil it down to a nuts and bolts game where you're saying, um, if I do this, this, and this, I'll have a 72% chance of winning, or whatever. Maybe you don't work out the exact percentage, but you you get to that point where you say, if I do these three, four things. Um, then I'll have the best chance of winning uh, because the percentages state that that's, that's what I should do. <sighs> this game isn't about making the game about that kind of a decision. This game is about 
letting the theme and the idea of actually being that person trying to save the world and knowing full really well that you're probably not going to succeed uh, and, and letting it letting it take over you and take over the game and take over like what you're experiencing what you're doing and that's what this game is about I mean and I'm, I'm sure that the people that are out there who love to just boil the game down to its its basics um, enjoy it too but they enjoy it for a different reason than I do <coughs> and I just I mean I, I just couldn't play it like that I, I I wouldn't play the game anymore and I still play this game I love it I, I love it I love it I love it it has a ton of expansions though for it um I mean, I don't know. I, I bought them all uh, up to Innsmouth, and after that, I've kind of just not. Um, basically, because you know, it gets to be too much. I mean, in my opinion, the best uh, the best experience for this game is the base game in Dunwich Horror. I mean, because it, it gives you enough extra space to roll around in, uh, but it also doesn't make it, you know, too huge. I mean, we've tried playing with every single expansion on a giant table and all these different boards, and we tried it with, like, six people, and it was fun and everything like that, but, I mean, it was like a six-hour marathon, and you know, even though I love the game, it, it, it just takes too long when it gets to that level. Um, it's not going to be a game for somebody who wants to monitor, uh, you know, 17 different things and checking everything. Um, it's definitely a game where... If you definitely want to, you could easily cheat and just say, Oh, wait, I meant to put my skill at this level, you know. But, I mean, you're just cheating yourself at that point. As with any game you play solo. I mean, if you're going to cheat to win anyway, I mean, you know, it, it, then why are you playing the game in the first place? But then again, maybe that makes the game fun for you. I don't know. So, and who am I to tell you what it is? So, the bottom line for Arkham Horror for me is that it's incredibly difficult to, to learn. And it is very fiddly, and there's a thousand rules. The rule book could be a lot better, and there's lots of other detractors that you can you can say about the game. But the bottom line is is that it's it's just fun, and 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 if it wasn't for this game, and for this game being fun, then I probably wouldn't be sitting here in this chair doing this video in the first place. So that's Arkham Horror, and. Uh, you know, it, it's, you take it or leave it. I mean, I, I definitely think everybody should try playing it once, especially if you like co-op games. And especially if you like the Cthulhu Mythos. I mean, because um, the game is just a heck of a fun game to play. <coughs> and, I, and I hope I've conveyed that to you in some way. Now, um, uh, before I end this, um, I want to just say a few things real quickly. Um, shout outs, if you will. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Scott Nicholson uh, for uh, doing the board game reviews that he used to do with Board Games with Scott and now is in play video rules. Uh, in play video, uh, in play game videos. I, sorry. Um, if it wasn't for you, Scott, I, I probably uh, never would have had the guts to try any of this. I, I exchanged some emails with you back in the back in the day, and and you were nothing but uh, supportive and helpful. So thank you very much. Um, in my opinion, Scott still uh, uh, does uh, the best uh, board game videos out there, and um, I really wish he still did the board games with Scott stuff. But you know, uh, I know, uh, I know uh, they they take a lot of time and effort to to, to accomplish. So. Um, I'd like to thank Tom Vassell, uh, because, I mean, this the sheer, uh, amount of, of work that guy's done, um, I definitely after watching hundreds of his videos, uh, uh, his technique and his ability had to rub off on me, and I've definitely learned a lot, um, uh, by watching uh, what he does. And, um, I wish, uh, in a lot of ways, I wish I could do a nice, concise video like he does, and, and, and uh, but, you know, I do my own thing, so... Um, and uh, plus, he's, he just seems to be like a really, really nice guy, and I hope uh, hope I get to meet him someday. And I really hope I get to meet uh, Scott, of course, as well. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, thank Jeremy. Um, uh, Jeremy, you haven't done any videos for a long time, and, and uh, I kind of miss it. But um, uh, as far as uh, uh, video reviewers out there, uh, uh, you were—I yeah, I really appreciate the friendship, and I appreciated the. Uh, 
the time uh, um, that we, we we spent on the phone uh, BSing about uh, board games and talking about the industry and stuff like that. Um, I'd love, like to thank uh, Board Game Geek uh, for just having an awesome website and for uh, um, allowing my videos and my reviews and everything to be on there. Um, uh, I can't imagine. Um, I mean, obviously, I, I'd still be alive and I, I'd still enjoy my life if it wasn't for the website. But honestly, um, the website improves my life by some exponential that I, I probably can't even determine. So, um, you know, uh, to all the people that are in charge, uh, you know, Dirk, Aldi, Matthew, uh, God, I, I don't know all your names, I apologize. But to everybody that uh, runs, the, runs the show, thank you. Um... Shout out uh, to uh, my, my my video reviewers that I consider my uh, my my brethren, if you will. Um, to all the guys at uh, the gamers table, uh, keep up the work, guys. I, I watch your videos all the time, and, and I I think they're awesome. Um, Callendale, uh, you uh, I can't I can't even imagine doing all the videos that you do, and and I love watching them. So please keep keep putting those out. Um, Joel. Uh, you know, uh, keep it up. Um, I'm really looking forward to uh, what we're going to be doing uh, soon at uh, 2d6.org. Um, Marco, uh, you were like uh, also looking forward to the same stuff, man. Thanks for uh, getting me into 2d6.org, and, and uh, hopefully um, uh, we can start uh, working together on some of those projects we've been talking about. Um, most of all, and 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 and. Uh, uh, finally, uh, I need to thank uh, each and every one of you uh, that ever took the time to either read uh, one of my reviews or, or watch uh, one of my videos. And uh, whether you hated them or loved them, uh, for taking the time just to uh, experience what I uh, put together and put forth. And, and a very special thank you to everybody who took the time to either post a comment or send me an email or about anything, even if you thought I was doing a bad job, and I, I definitely got uh, emails uh, regarding that. And um, if it wasn't for uh, the criticism and it wasn't for the comments uh, about what I do, um, I wouldn't have gotten better. And I'm, I'm constantly trying to get better. So um, I, I got to tell you this one thing: uh, if you're looking for shorter videos, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, my goal is to get things done underneath a half an hour, but um, you know it's probably not going to be the case. Uh, so if that's one of your goals uh, to try to drum into me, it, it, it probably won't happen. But um, uh, I can honestly say uh, I've really enjoyed doing all these videos and I've, I've just had a blast. And um, I don't see myself ever stopping doing this uh, unless it ever gets boring or unless it ever stops being fun. So thank you to all the, the designers for making great games. Uh, thank you to all the publishers that were kind enough to send me a copy of a game. Um, thank you to Tom at Boards and Bits for being awesome, Thor at Game Surplus for being awesome, Dave at Time Well Spent for being awesome. Um, you know, I, I could go on and on, and I, and I do apologize. I'm not going to. I'm going to let you guys go. But um, it's been a blast. Uh, here's another 100 reviews. And uh, by all means, take care of yourself. Uh, blessings uh, to all of you. And uh, uh, I'll see you at uh, video number 101. All right. You have a good night. No, I was going off on a tangent. It was dumb. Just to jump right in. I know, I mean, I'll work on my mom, but I mean, what do you want me to say to him, you know? Same thing you're going to have to tell your boss when you're not working Mondays. Hmm, they don't do Mondays. Ugh. Yeah, they can get a shirt. I bet they have a same shirt. I want to get this done, please. Oh, all right. I'm not tired. I took a nap watching... Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. Well, it is Wednesday. I'm... So your mom for sure 
Sure wants to do <laughs> no, it's starting up again. Yes, but just can we discuss it in a little bit, please? Hello everybody, this is Undead Viking coming to you from my game room once again. I'm uh, here with another one of my video reviews. Uh, this particular video review, as you very well... They don't roll well, I mean they'll lose. And, and that's... A lot of people that are fans of zero-sum games... Um, Chihuahua! 